This video is how to do the interlac banded wrist warmers. The part I'm showing in this video is just the band itself. It's going to be a slightly long video because we need to go through each step so it's fully understandable. I would do a second video on this portion of it which will include the, the palm, the thumb, as well as the finish and binding off in a rib stitch. The first thing we'll do is working on a magic loop. This is the only way I've found to be able to do this thing the easiest. You start by casting on 30 stitches. Take it to the middle of your needles. Count them and divide them in half. 2, 4, 6, 12, 14, 15. Place your fingers between the 15th and 16th stitch. Slightly bend the cord. Don't kink it though and slide the yarn down. So you have 15 stitches on either side or on each needle. Slide them onto the needles. Make sure that the cast on edges touch on both needles. This is a quick lesson in the magic loop as well as the interlock hat. Place your yarn over your back needle. Pull the back needle out leaving a loop on the back side. Insert your needle in the first stitch on the other needle. Pick up your yarn and begin knitting. So the first 15 will be knitted. There's three rounds to get the base part of the interlock wrist warmers started. The first round is knit, the second round is purl, and the last round is knit. And you hold the yarn differently when you start it, the knit round than you do when you start the purl round. That was one of the reasons why I felt I should show you all three rounds of this part, especially if you've never done the magic loop before. Drop your first needle that's completed, turn your work over, making sure your cast on stitches still touch. Slide your needle back. There it goes. Make sure your yarn is on the top of your needle, your back needle. Pull your back needle out. Insert it in the first stitch of your front needle and begin knitting. So you knit these 15 stitches. So this is the second half of round one. The first half of round two will be purled as well as the second half of round two. In the beginning it's a little awkward because you do not have a lot of stitches on it. But it won't take long before you really get the hang of it. It's a great way to do sleeves on a little child's jacket. It's great for doing cowl necks on a kid or adult sweater. It's whenever you need to do a small amount of stitches and you don't want to deal with uh, double pointed. Drop your first needle like we did the last time. Slide your stitches back up onto your other needle. Sometimes you have to kind of twist your needle to get them to go because you want to keep that last two stitches taut, otherwise you'll get that ladder appearance that you would get on double pointed. Now this time, since we're doing a purl, instead of placing the yarn over it, we're going to leave the yarn down. I just kind of hold it a little bit here just to make sure it stays out of my way. Take your back needle out, insert it in your front needle as if to purl from back to front, yarn over, and you just completed your first purl. You do this all the way across. Try to put a little speed on it so we can get through it a little bit quicker so you can see the turn again. A few more stitches here and we'll be ready to do the second half of round two of the wrist warmer. Turn your work again just like we did before. Slide your needle back up on your stitches. Now this is the other half of the purl, so instead of wrapping it this way, we're going to leave it down. Pull the back needle out. Insert it as if to knit. Yarn over and purl the second half of round two. Now the next round will be a knit roll. What we're doing is basically doing this part inside out. 
because our fourth row, which is the diamond pattern, will start on the pearl side. So we turn our work, slide our needle back in. So this is a knit round, so you want to take your yarn and place it over your back needle. Pull your back needle out, making sure you leave your loop. Knit first half of round three. Just about done. Now we're going to knit the second half of round three and we'll be ready to start the actual triangle of the interlock pattern. Slide your needle back. Place your yarn over your back needle. Pull it through. Now we're going to knit these last 15 stitches and we'll be done with all three rounds of the base. That'll get us ready to start on the triangle. If you've already watched the interlock hat video, then you will understand how this works on the wrist warmer. However, since it is such a small item with smaller amount of stitches, you have to do the magic loop just a little bit different when you're doing the actual diamonds and triangles than when you would do it on a hat with more diamonds and triangles. Okay, now we're going to turn our work. Now we're going to start our pattern. It's in groups of five, so these are done in short rolls. Put your yarn to the back like we've discussed previously. No, I'm sorry, this is a purl, so the yarn has to be to the front. So we're going to purl two. Turn our work knit two because these are short rolls. We're only going to do a few stitches at a time. Turn our work back. Purl three this time. We're going to add one more to it. Turn our work, knit three. Turn our work. Purl four. Turn our work, knit four, turn our work, purl five, turn, knit five, and then our final roll is purl five. That will complete our first triangle. And as you can see here, it's definitely forming a triangle. Turn our work, purl five. Okay, so now first triangle is done. We repeat it again. We start with a purl two, knit two, purl three, knit three, purl four, knit four, purl five, knit five. And we'll complete this pattern until all six have been completed. I'll stop after this because now we've got the base on the first triangle. Have the first one started and the second one going. Now once you get all six of your triangles done, you're now going to work on the, the knit side. But in order to do the knit side, we have to do our first pickup on the purl side to get it to turn around. So the last thing we'll do is make sure we purl the last five, which we've done. At this point, you see all my yarn is in the bottom of the circle of the magic loop. You want to take these five from this one only, put it on that needle, take the last five of this one and put them on the needle because you only want to have just these ten stitches. Leave these back here. We won't be needing them. So we're going to purl and pick up five stitches along the long edge of the first triangle. Two, three, four, whoops, I missed, try again, and then five. This will get in your way a little bit, but just work around it. Turn your work. Now we're going to begin our actual pattern. Knit four, and then we'll do an SSK. So one, two, 
three, four. So we want to join this triangle to the re rectangle we're working on. So an SSK would be a slip one as if to knit, slip a second one as if to knit, put them back on your left needle, and knit them together. Turn your work, purl back five. Now this whole rectangle is done with just these same two rolls. Four, and there's number five. Turn our work, and do it again, knit four. And then we do an SSK, joining these two together. So it's slip one, and this closes your gap between your rectangle and your triangle. Knit them together, and it causes a lift leading decrease. Now we're going to purl five back. Turn our work, and we're going to repeat it again. We're going to knit four. Now I like to do knit two together through the back loop, and so instead of doing the slip, slip, knit, I knit them together through the back loop. It makes the same left angle decrease as the SSK, which I found works just as nice and a little bit quicker than doing the SSK. It's entirely up to you which one you would like to do because they both do look alike. Turn your work, knit four, SSK or knit two together through the back loop. Turn your work, purl five, Turn your work. This is the last one of this rectangle. Then we'll start the next rectangle. This rectangle, if you remember, was started on the purl side in order to get it to turn onto the knit side. Now we are on the knit side. As you can see, we're right here, so we'll be picking up on the knit side here instead of on the purl side like we did on the back. We do the same thing again. Pull the last five over and then pull the last five of those over. So you just have these to work with. Now this time we're going to pick up and knit five as if to knit. One, two, three, four. And I like to pick up this one right here where this big long stitch is, right into there. That kind of helps keep it snug and close together so you don't have a little hole there. And then you purl back five. And this is how the last five rectangles will be finished. Turn your work, knit four. Then you either do an SSK or knit two together through the back loop to close up the gap. Turn your work, purl back five. And you repeat this all the way to the end, just like you did on the first rectangle. And you would repeat this through to the very end, so you have six rectangles. So if you do knit five, I mean knit four, you have your gap again, and you want to close the gap, either with an SSK, or knit two together through the back loop. And you would do that until you completed all your rectangles all the way around your work. Once you've completed the rectangles around your work, you'll have this. From here, you would do the same thing again. You would slide the last five over, and, you, and the last five over on this side. Now we're working on the purl side because the, both triangles are done on the purl, where, both, where the rectangle is done on the knit side. So same thing as before, you pick up five stitches as if to purl, These needles are a little bit stiff to work on. Okay, now the trick with this one is keep track of how many stitches you have on your right needle and it'll tell you how many stitches you need to knit off of your left. So at this point I have five, so I'm going to knit five. Okay. 
And when you turn your work, we do one less. So in this case, we're going to purl four. And then we purl two together, which will close up the gap between the triangle and the next rectangle. Now when we turn back, we have four stitches here, so that means we knit four. Turn our work, purl three, because we purl one less than what we knit. We're going to close the gap, so we purl these two together. When we turn our work, there's three left, so we're going to knit three. Now we'll purl two. Purl these two together. Now we're down to two stitches, so we knit two. Turn our work. Purl one. Purl two together by closing the gap. Turn our work. Knit one. And then we do our final where we purl two together. Your first triangle is complete. Do the same thing again. You want to take just the last five, put it on your needle, and the last five here, put it on your needle, and we're going to begin again. This time, as we did the last time, you want to pick up five as if to purl. Once you get the rhythm of this, it's really easy to do. It's just the beginning, it just feels awkward. Turn your work. Now we have five stitches here, so we want to knit five. Turn our work. Purl four. We're repeating exactly what we did on the first row. It's all spilled out in the pattern. The pattern can be ordered off of stitchniche.com. It shortly will be on Ravelry. It's not on it yet. At this point we have four stitches, so we need to knit four. Then we turn our work, purl three, purl two together, and just keep back and forth, back and forth until you've got all six of them completed. At this point, we have an actual band as, such as this. All that's left now is to finish up this edge so we can start the top. And as you can see, it's very open. We need to close these up to make them tight. Now the way I found to do that is bring your main needle to the front instead of on the back. For, it winds up being on the front when you do this. But once you go around to the other side, then it works out just fine. Pull the back needle out, and your yarn is actually on your front. Pick up your stitch from the previous roll, put it on your needle, and knit these two together. Do the same thing again. Pick up the stitch from the previous roll, put it on your needle, knit it together. And you want to do this all the way through, all 30 stitches. Pick up the stitch from the roll below, knit them together. As you can see, it really makes it nice and snug. You don't have any gaping holes that would interfere with the overall look of your finished product. Now there's also a way where you can wrap each stitch and pick up the wrap stitch. I just found this is just saving one step, not having to do the wrap stitch, but still come up with the same look as if it was the wrap stitch. You do this all the way around. This one's a little loose, but it won't matter by the time you get it all knitted together. They all will even out. Okay, just about got this one done. Once you've gone completely around doing this pickup stitch, the next round will be all pearls, and that's what's going to give us the little ridge, which is a nice eye break or rest stop between the interlock band and the actual wrist warmer itself. One more. And the first half is done. Now when you turn your work, you'll notice your needle is on the back again. Slide your stitches up. 
So now we're going to pick up the other 15. Your yarn is in the back. We're going to start working the magic loop method again all the way. The rest of this will be worked in magic loop until you get to the thumb. Then that'll be a little different, but as I said, that'll be on the next video. We still need to pick up this stitch and knit them together. That one's a little tight. Some of them are real cooperative and others just don't like to cooperate. But with a little patience, you'll get it. They eventually give up. Okay, we're down to the last 10, I believe. We're in the home stretch. And the final roll of the actual band will be a purl roll, which will be done as soon as this one is finished. Looks like we just have two more to go. Oh, my mistake. Three more to go. There, and last one. Okay, now we have them all up on our needle and nice and snug and tight. So at this point, we're going to do our purl, bring our stitches back up. And to purl, instead of dropping the yarn over, we want to leave it underneath the needle. Pull the back needle out, insert it as if to purl, pick up your yarn, and start purling. And you do this all the way around, both sides, and at that point, your wrist warmer interlock portion will be completed.